All right, I got some good news and I got some bad news. The good news is that I am for real basically caught up on my What's Old videos. I, I think I'm only like one week behind now, which is amazing. The bad news is why I'm caught up. I'm basically caught up because I was able to combine two weeks worth of what sold for this video and that's because I barely sold anything those two weeks. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park. I am a part-time reseller on a variety of reselling platforms and you're gonna hear about a bunch of them in today's video. A couple things, my eye right here in like the corner looks really gross. Um, I went to the eye doctor and she thinks like an oil gland is like blocked or something. I don't know. I suspect that it's because I'm a very vigorous eye rubber. Like I rub my eyes. I don't know why. Like I just go to town and I just rub my eyes and they get itchy. And I think with allergy season among us and the fact that there's literally a cornfield behind my house, summer has not been kind to my eyes. So that's that's the situation here. I'm so sorry if that is a distraction. But we're gonna go ahead and talk about two weeks worth of what sold. And listen, there's no excuse for why these weeks were rough. You know, in the last video, I was able to say, oh, we were on vacation. Or before that, oh, I just, you know, was going to the pool a lot. And I feel like the two weeks that we're about to talk about, I feel like I worked relatively hard. Like I tried a good amount to make more sales and do the things. And yet sales were really, really crappy. <laughs> Please let me know down in the comments below if that has been your experience as well. Yeah, like I almost feel like I was putting in a little bit more work and a little bit more effort and got nothing out of it. So that is kind of how July has been going for me. I do think as we get closer to the school year, things are gonna pick up, but whew, it has been rough times. So we're gonna start by talking about July 3rd, which is a Monday. On Poshmark, I sold this J Jill Pure Jill, that's like their linen line, linen blue sleeveless layered dress in a size extra small petite. I did put the word log and look in the title. This one sold for $27 and I had $3 into it from a local consignment store. I've had this for a while. I got it during a sale that this consignment store was having. I still stand behind the purchase of this dress. I think it's really cute. I think it's a really good style and it's made of good material. It's just that it's a really small size. It's an extra small petite. I knew buying it that I was gonna have to sit on it for a while, but then it did pretty decent for me and I made a net profit of $18.60 on that. The next sale was over on eBay. I think I talked about the same sale maybe a few weeks ago, but I had two of these items. So it's this Wemo mini Wi-Fi smart plug. It's compatible with like Alexa, I'm so sorry if I made yours go off. Google Assistant, Apple, HomeKit, all that kind of stuff. It was new in the box and it sold for $15.99 on eBay. This is something that my husband just kind of had laying around the house, but then he, you know, decided to use something else. As we were, you know, purging and getting ready to move, he was like, do you think you could sell these? And I was like, yeah, I think so. So I put it in my inventory rather than, you know, just donating it or something. And I was able to make a net profit of $14.99 on that. So. Yay for purging. On Tuesday, which was July 4th, oh, I had a good sale. I was just on the Let's Do Lunch podcast, which was a blast. Those women who run that podcast are so fun. Definitely check it out and subscribe if you haven't already. I will have a link for it down in the description below. But I was talking about this sale and it's a French brand. I did not know how to pronounce it. And Kristen from A Rural Squirrel, whew, that's a hard handle to say, rural squirrel. I think it's because the word rural is so hard to say, but she taught me how to pronounce the name of this brand. I'm probably still gonna butcher it. So sorry, Kristen. I think it's Cezanne. That's my best French accent. Cezanne. I don't know. Let me know on a scale of one to five how good or bad that was. But it was this Gabriella off the shoulder blouse in a red floral daisy print. It was in a European size 40, which is the equivalent of a US size eight. This I found at a local thrift store for $2.99. And I about fell over in the middle of this thrift store. It was on a new rack. This is why all resellers say, go straight to the new rack. If you see someone coming out from the back of the thrift store with a rack of clothes that they're about to put out, you best be running as fast as you can over to that rack because there's probably gonna be some good stuff on it. I found this there. I have gotten fry boots on new racks. I've gotten a Patagonia fleece on new racks. New racks are where it's at. So I found this on a new rack, about threw up a 
in my mouth. I was so excited. And it sold for $75. I think I had it listed for 100, but Posture VA was sending out 15% offers to anyone who liked an item, plus discounted shipping, and someone accepted. So I made a net profit of $54.99. And don't kill me when I say this, but I kind of understand why like a typical thrift store person wouldn't know that this is something pretty spectacular. To be honest, like to the naked eye, it could look like it's just something from Forever 21 or something. It's not like it was made of 100% silk. It's not like it said, I'm a luxury brand on the chest. It was a floral shirt. And it's basically that little tag. It's like a centimeter thick, that little tag that says Cezanne on it is the reason why this garment costs so much money. But I'm happy that my thrift store didn't know about it. I'm happy that they did not mark it up because I got it for $2.99 and I made a $54.99 profit and that was exciting. And probably most definitely the most exciting sale of the week. The next thing to sell on Poshmark was far less exciting. It was a pair of my husband's vans. They were in this khaki color. They had a textile upper and they were in a men's size nine. Those sold for $12 and I was happy to sell them for $12 because I think my husband has had these for maybe close to two decades. And so, you know, if I can make any money off of them, awesome. I think that was with this kind of ship. And so my net profit on those was $7.03. On Wednesday, which was July 5th, on eBay, I sold this pair of Chico's white Bermuda shorts. They were in a Chico size three, which is the equivalent of a US size 16. They did have like an adjustable length, so you could fold the bottom of the shorts up and like there's like a little button that you can, you know, one of those things. So these sold for $14.90. They were promoted at 3%. In last week's What Sold video, I talked a lot about how I use promoted listings on eBay. And you're gonna see it helped out a lot this week as well. Most of the things that I sold were a direct result of promoted listings. But I only had a dollar and 11 cents into these. I got them at a local consignment store during their birthday sale. So they celebrate their birthday for like an entire week. It's a week long extravaganza. So I did go the day of their birthday but then I also went back a few days later when they were selling you know bagfuls of item for less money per bag than they were the first day of their sale and that's why my cost of goods for this particular day was so low now I did have to settle for picking up a lot of bread and butter it was a lot of Chico's it was a lot of you know White House Black Market those kinds of brands brands that I am not excited about but if I'm spending a dollar and 11 cents on them it's kind of like going to the bins so you know I had a dollar and 11 cents into this so I made a net profit of ten dollars and 92 cents and it's great because this consignment store actually has two locations there's one in the town that I live in and then there's one in the town over which is maybe like 15 minutes away and they both have birthday sales and their birthdays are on different days. So I get to go at least twice a year to like a really big blowout clearance sale between the two stores. And then I feel like even aside from that, they have one other great blowout sale. And yeah, there are great deals to be had. Not a huge profit, but I was happy with it nonetheless. On Mercari, I had a pretty great sale. It was this pair of Harley Davidson black bootcut jeans in a women's size 10. These sold for $45. I had $3.92 into them because a while ago, I bought half a pallet off of a reseller who just had too much inventory on her hands. And so I had $3.92 into each of those items. And on those jeans, I made a net profit of $34.50. I was very happy with that. On Thursday, which was July 6th, on Poshmark, I sold this jacket by the brand Denim 24-7. I have never in my life seen this brand before, but it's something that came to me from a different reseller who sold me all of her clothing inventory because she realized that she doesn't really like to resell clothes. She'd rather stick to hard goods. Um, so this was a black full zip brocade textured coat. It was in a 14W. I mean, I could just tell looking at it and touching it that this was not an expensive piece. This was not something sold at like Saks Fifth Avenue. This was something that was sold at like a Kohl's or a TJ Maxx or a Gordman's or something like that. So I think I half-heartedly looked up comps, but I basically had my mindset on just listing it low and getting it out of here. So I think I listed this for like 20 or $25. On this day, however, I sent an offer of $12 with this kind of shipping. I don't know if I was running a sale or something. I honestly don't remember, but the person accepted. I had $2 into the item. I made a net profit of $5.03. So 
On Kittizen, I sold this Uniqlo blue button front mini skirt in a size zero. I do not resell most Uniqlo pieces that I find. However, this was something that someone gave to me for free. It's a friend of mine from church. Um, maybe her daughter had worn it, and I did think it was cute. I feel like this was trendy not too long ago, like when I listed it, but it did eventually sell on Kittizen. Someone put it in their cart, and I sent them an offer of $18, which they accepted. I do pay for shipping when it comes to Kittizen and Depop, so I paid for shipping on this, and so my net profit after shipping and fees was $10.19. I didn't have anything into it so I lucked out and made a little profit but again Uniqlo is not really a brand that I think has a lot of resale value to it just because their pieces don't retail for a ton to begin with. On Friday which was July 7th I had two eBay sales. The first one was interesting. It was this new in the box Yanovate that was the brand name or like the company name. It was this two-in-one ultra sweat waist and thigh trimmer butt lifter band okay if you have ever tried anything like this please be brave and let me know down in the comments how it worked out for you i just don't understand how a band that you wear around your middle is going to help you lose weight or like trim inches off of your midsection i i just don't get it so I would love to learn if that's something that is for real. I did not go out and source this, but I had a company reach out to me maybe like two years ago at this point. They specialize in creating lots for resellers to buy and they're primarily like Amazon pulls or Amazon returns. So it was all hard goods. It took me forever to list the stuff from that box. I actually might still have a few things that I haven't listed from that box because that's how much I hate listing hard goods. I did finally get around to listing this and it sold for $11.99. It was promoted at 3% on eBay. I didn't have anything into it because that company sent it to me for free so that I could film an unboxing for you guys which if you want to see it I will link it here and I made a net profit of eight dollars and sixteen cents moral of the story you do not need to source these if you see them out in the wild the next thing to sell was by the brand 47 brand this is a brand that does a lot of like sports team stuff like hats and uh, I don't know t-shirts jerseys that sort of thing but it was for the Detroit Red Wings which is NHL hockey hmm? And it was a cap, like a baseball cap. I think I put the word baseball cap in the listing title, even though this clearly is not for a baseball team. But I guess people are always putting logos on baseball caps, even if it's not for baseball. Anyway, it was in a youth size. This was something that I had purchased off of a reseller forever ago. Maybe like the very first time I ever purchased a reseller's inventory off of her. She was local to me and she just had some family matters come up and so she wanted more time to spend with family and she didn't want to resell anymore. So I bought all of her inventory off of her. The majority of it was really good stuff and there are just like a few pieces left in my inventory. This hat sold for $10. I had about a dollar and two cents into it so I made a net profit of $7.60. On Saturday which was July 8th on Poshmark I sold this Aviva set the pace pleated ruffle aqua skirt squirt in a size youth 12. This sold for $29 on Poshmark and I made a net profit of $23.20. That was something that I believe I thrifted a long time ago for my daughter. I don't think she ended up wearing it. I'm still saying I had no cost of goods into it because one, I don't remember what the cost of goods was, but two, because I had bought it for her. Again, she never wore it, but yeah, yeah. So here was the annoying thing about this sale. I had this listed for $35. It got a ton of attention because in case you didn't know, Aviva was Lululemon's children's line, but this line no longer exists. Maybe there wasn't enough profit in this Aviva line, I don't know, but Lululemon decided to ax the Aviva line. And so basically what is out there is all that is out there. So these pieces can have some value even though it's you know a children's brand. So it was getting a ton of attention. Someone sent me an offer on Poshmark for $29, which, you know, I had it listed for $35. That's a super reasonable offer. I went ahead and accepted. Within an hour or two, I got a message from the buyer and she was like, hey, I ordered these on accident. Can you please cancel? And I was like, how do you send me a $29 offer on accident? Like, that's not an accident. Like, you didn't trip and fall while you were on your phone and press two and nine and then also, like, hit confirm and hit, you know, all those things. Like, there's so many buttons you have to press. I know, because I buy things on Poshmark all the friggin' time. So she was like, it was an accident. So I responded and I said, okay, well, you're still within your three hour window. You should be able to cancel. 
she did not cancel. So the next day when I was getting ready to ship, I messaged her and I said, hey, you never ended up canceling. Does that mean you want this skirt? She did not respond to me. I waited a whole nother day. She didn't respond. I just went ahead and sent the skirt and I got my money for it. So actually, let me check. Let me check if I got paid for that one. A few moments later. Yep, order is complete. <laughs> I got my monies. She got her skirt. On eBay, I sold this T by Talbot striped half zip pullover UPF 50 plus protection top in a size extra small. This is something that I got at a local consignment store. They were having a killer sale. It was like a sidewalk sale. Everything was a dollar. You best believe that I got so many bread and butter pieces at that sale, including this one. T by Talbot's for a dollar? Yes, please. It sold for $23 on eBay. It was promoted at 3%. I made a net profit of $17.25. And I would make that purchase again and again and again and again. On Sunday, which was July 9th, on Poshmark, I sold this pair of torrid, black distressed, sky-high skinny jeans in a size 14R. Those sold for $19. I had $9.23 into those. Now, that was an average cost of goods from a day of sourcing at a pop-up consignment sale that happens in my town twice a year. So I'm pretty sure I didn't actually have $9.23 into those jeans, but you know we're going by average cost of goods, so it seems really high, and therefore my net profit on those was only $5.00. 97 cents. I'm just glad to have Torrid jeans move at all because I feel like I have a good amount in my closet and they're just not moving the way that I thought that they would. I know that with Torrid especially, like bigger sizes do, not even like bigger sizes necessarily, but sizes right in the middle. You don't want to sell Torrid like size medium stuff, which is I think their smallest size. Um, and I think even like 4X, 5X, that stuff can be a little bit harder to move to. I think your sweet spot really is in like the 2X, 3X sizes. But that being said, I just feel like with denim, I've had a hard time moving even like the good sizes in Torrid. So I don't know. And I know that recency matters and these are kind of a little bit more dated, but I've had these for a while. Like I had these listed when skinny jeans were much more popular than they are now. So I generally have a really hard time moving Torrid jeans. So I don't really pick them up anymore unless I'm getting a really good deal on them. But I pick them up knowing that I'm probably gonna have to sit on them for quite some time. The next thing to sell on Poshmark was this J. Crew collection gold leaf jacquard tank top necktie. Jacquard, Jacquard tank top neck, Jacquard tank top, and it had like a little necktie, um, and it was in a size medium. I've talked about J. Crew collection on my channel before. It is the highest tier in J. Crew world, but that doesn't mean anything when it comes to resale. It still doesn't sell for very much. Um, so this sold for $25. I had $2.60 into it from a local consignment store. So I made a net profit of $17.40, which wasn't bad. And I thought this was actually a really beautiful piece. And because I knew I was gonna be paying so little for it, I had no problems with sourcing this item. And it actually sold pretty quickly, like within a month of being listed. The next thing to sell did not sell quickly. This I've had listed for at least a few months. It was this Michael Michael Kors purple striped button up shirt in a neck size 16 and a half. This sold for $12 on Poshmark. It was from the reseller who had too much inventory. So she sold me, you know, a half pallet of it. So I had $3.92 into this. I made a net profit of $5.13. So you can see even in July, the trend of, you know, selling items and making really small profits on certain items, that trend has continued, which is a trend that I would love to see go away. I don't need to take that trend with me into like August, September and beyond. The next thing to sell was over on eBay. This was even worse, but this one I don't really care about. It was this game called Cooking Mama Cook-Off for the Wii. It was in its case and it was just something that I got at a garage sale. I actually got it with like the Wii Fit balance board. Um, and it came with the Wii Fit game as well. And then this was just part of it. It was bundled all together at the garage sale for $3 for all those things. The Wii balance beam thing already sold. I talked about that, I think in last week's What Sold video. And this game, when I looked up comps, it just was not going for much. So I just went ahead and actually threw it up on auction on eBay, which I hardly ever do. I don't run a lot of auctions on eBay. Sometimes I go through phases where like my worst items, I'm like, okay, let's just do 99 cent auctions and just get them out of here. And maybe I should do that a little bit more. In fact, 
I think I'll do that. Like maybe I'll do that this weekend on Sunday. I'll have some auctions go live for 99 cents. But I had this item starting at $1.99. It got one bid. And so I made a net profit of 96 cents. The last thing to sell this week was over on Mercari and it was this pair of Miss Me low rise red flannel pocket signature jean cutoff shorts in a women's size 28. That sold for $28 literally within days of being listed. This even had um, some small marks on the front that I didn't even try to get out because I was like, I don't feel like it. <laughs> I knew they would sell regardless. And like, I knew that they wouldn't sell for that much more even if I got the stains out. So I just went ahead and photographed and listed them. This is interesting because this marks the first sale of something new that I'm trying. I have a coworker at my school who I work alongside who has just so much clothes, she said, so much stuff that she just wants to get rid of. And she was like, is there a way we can work together where it's beneficial to both of us? So I'm not gonna lie, the main reason I said yes is because she said that she has a lot of Aviator Nation and I've seen her wear it to work. Aviator Nation, in case you don't know, is a really expensive brand. It's mainly like loungewear pieces and I've actually never seen it out in the wild. Um, it's not a very big brand or a big company, but people who wear it are very loyal to it and she's one of those people. So when she said Aviator Nation, my ears like immediately perked up and I was like, yeah, like let's figure something out. So it's funny because um, I am part of a decent number of like Poshmark Facebook groups. I am one of those lurkers who like never post, but I just kind of like see what people are saying, especially when it comes to like new things on Poshmark, like Posh shows or, you know, promoted closets, things like that. I just kind of want to see what people have to say about it before I jump in and try anything. But I saw a post from someone and I don't think this was in one of the Poshmark groups. I feel like this was in the Bolo Buddies group. And someone was asking about doing consignments with maybe like a family member or a friend. There were like, 60 or 70 comments on this post and everyone was like, no, don't do it. This is the worst idea. This is how you break relationships. And I was very taken aback. I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> like consigning is not a good idea. Like people feel very strongly about this. Um, I think what people suggest is instead of doing a consignment deal, just buy their inventory from them outright, which is what I have done in the past, even with uh, friends and family, even with you know strangers or other resellers. I've not really, done consignment like this before. But I thought I'd try it with her and I'll tell you why. One, it is something that I would be interested in doing with strangers. And what I mean by that is I would love to go out and find clients, people who like, I don't have a relationship with right now, but people who have great clothes, really expensive clothes and want to make more money off of their clothes than what they could make from, you know, the local consignment stores in the area. Um, that would be awesome. But I would love to like kind of get some experience under my belt of how I would do that, what my systems would look like. So when she brought up to me, hey, I'd love to basically consign with you. I was like, that's great because I've wanted to do this for some time now and I just need to figure out how to do it. Secondly, she just kept saying to me over and over again, I wanna make sure that you get a lot out of this. And she's like, I'm just gonna bring you clothes and whatever you feel like you can't sell, I don't care what you do with it. You can take it to Plato's, you can donate it to Goodwill. I don't need you to ask me for permission as to what you wanna do with those pieces. I just want it gone and I never wanna see it again. So that kind of like showed me that she really trusted me and there wasn't gonna be a lot of like looking over my shoulder. Not that I'm out here trying to do shady things, but you know, just to know that like, she's not gonna get mad at me for not trying to list, you know, like a Forever 21 skirt from 12 years ago but that she's okay with me just going ahead and donating something like that. So for those two reasons, I was like, okay, let's try it. So I got all her stuff. There actually wasn't any Aviator Nation in any of those bags. I think maybe as she was going through it, she was like, I just wanna keep this stuff. And I don't blame her, I get that. Um, but there were some really great pieces. There were also a lot of pieces that I'm just gonna take to Play-Dohs. And if Play-Dohs isn't accepted, I'm just gonna go ahead and donate. And there are a lot of pieces because I'm only gonna list the items that are worth my time when I'm not getting to keep the entire profit, I have to give her a portion. So we're gonna play around with it and see what works and what doesn't. But essentially what I landed on is anything that gives me a $25 profit or more after 
fees, after cost of goods, all that kind of stuff, I am going to give her 50%. And then anything lower than that, I'm going to give her 40%. Again, I'm not listing the things that are going to sell for like $10, $12. I'm trying to only list things that are going to hopefully make me close to a $20, $25 profit. So these would have given me a net profit of $23.67, which is a little under that $25 net profit threshold. And so I'm giving her 40% of the profit. So I'm keeping $40 and 20 cents as my profit. So you might be hearing a lot about sales from this coworker of mine in the coming what sold videos because I have started listing her pieces. And as I share this journey of, you know, trying out consignment in this way, you can kind of discern for yourself if you feel like this is something that you want to try on your end. And if you have any tips for me regarding consignment clients, I would love to hear them. I would love to learn from your experience. If you have any, please leave any tips that you have down in the comments below. So in this week of sales, I made a net profit of $305.88. I made sales across four different platforms. So I'm thankful that even though it wasn't the greatest sales week, I'm thankful that it's easy for me to list to these four different platforms. And you guys know that it's because of List Perfectly. List Perfectly is what I use to cross list to like I don't know, like five or six different platforms. And that's why I usually have sales from a good number of platforms every single week. And if that's something you are looking into, you know, trying out some other platforms instead of just relying on one or two, I definitely recommend using List Perfectly to cross list because it's really fast, it's really easy, and they give you a ton of other tools that are super helpful as a reseller as well. So I have my link down in the description below, but to save 30% on your first month, you can use my coupon code, which is Becky Park. So moving on to the next week. Ooh, this was a sad week. So actually on Monday, which was July 10th on eBay, we started off with a return. It was a Tallulah dress, which I believe is a Ritzia. This person asked me a bajillion questions about the dress, got it. And then they were like, it doesn't fit. So they sent it back. It breaks the heart, but it is part of doing business. But what made it even worse was that I think I had had so few eBay sales and maybe right around this time, I got billed for my eBay store and I got an email from eBay being like, we are going to pull X amount of dollars out of your bank account because this is how much you owe eBay. Oh my goodness, the nerve. Yeah, I think once you add up the charges from like things that I had shipped out and the charge from what I had to pay eBay for my store and then this refund that pulled money out of my account, I just was in the negative. So that was awful and made me feel pretty horrible about myself. But again, it is what it is. And then to top it off on Tuesday and Wednesday of that week, I had zero sales across all platforms. No one wanted to buy any of my stuff. So I was feeling pretty low. It was not a good way to start the week. So on Thursday, which was July 13th, we started to see some action. And on Poshmark, I sold this pair of Levi's white skinny jeans in a size youth 10. It did have like the adjustable waist where you can like pull on that little elastic band on the inside and make it tighter or looser. And so those sold for $12 with discounted shipping. That is something that I got from a local consignment store during COVID. I filled entire bags with clothes and they sold me each bag for $50. And I'm talking about like huge garbage bags, not like little shopping bags, like big garbage bags. And you know, I only had to pay $50 per bag. So I had a dollar and 80 cents into that. I made a net profit of $5 and 23 cents. That was my first sale of the week and I made a $5 23 cent profit. And then my angel from LA came along, Ricardo. You guys have heard me talk about him. He just flies in out of nowhere in these kinds of weeks when I am really on that struggle bus and he'll just swoop in, make a full price sale from me. It's always something that is new. It's like new with tags, new in the box. Um, he comes in and he makes a sale. He leaves me an encouraging word and all is well with the world. Like, I don't... This is somebody that I have never met in real life. I don't know that I ever will. I'm like kind of teary. <laughs> and like, he's, he just finds a way to be so encouraging. And whew, I don't know. I need to design a t-shirt that says, be like Ricardo. Because if we had more Ricardos in the world, 
the world would be a better place. So he bought this new with tags guest signature light rose leather Thornton zip around wallet from me. It was new in the box. It was something that I got from a friend of mine before he moved. Um, he gave me a ton of clothes that he didn't wear, no longer wore, didn't want to move with him, obviously. And so um, he gave it all to me. I gave him some money for everything and it came out to about $2 per item. Ricardo bought this at my full asking price of $34.99 and I made a net profit of $27.20. I just have a hard time understanding why basically a stranger is so nice to me. I don't get it. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve Ricardo, but who like, mm, I love you. Okay. I'm gonna get in the zone here. On Friday, which was July 14th, on Poshmark, I sold this new with tags, Talbot's Leopard Print 100% Silk Pleated Dress in a size 4. This checks all the boxes when it comes to the type of Talbot's piece that I like to pick up. This was new with tags. It's 100% silk. It's a classic piece. I definitely had it priced a little too high. I probably had it priced at like $75, which I think it warranted given that it's 100% silk, but it sat forever, like for two years. <laughs> but it did finally sell for $42, and that was with discounted shipping. I was clearly sending out, you know, steep discounts because of the fact that I had made zero sales the first three days of the week. And after my cost of goods, which was $8.20, I got this at that pop up consignment sale like two years ago. Um, and after my discounted shipping, after Poshmark's fees, I made a net profit on that dress of $23.30. Cents. Not the killing I was hoping for, but still pretty good. And just another example of why I love selling Talbot so much. The next thing to sell was another piece that I had forever and ever. It was by the brand Gabor? Gabor? I don't know how to say this brand. And frankly, no matter how you say it, it doesn't sound very pretty. But it was this pair of strappy leather heels in a size seven and a half. It was like a snake print with a block heel and an open toe. This I got at a local consignment store. And I think this was like one of the first times that they were able to open their doors since COVID. Um, this was the store that I shopped at during COVID by myself in the storage unit. But literally like the first day that they were able to open their doors to the public, I think I was there. And because I had just shopped from them in bulk, you know, by myself in their storage unit during COVID, they kind of allowed me to do the same thing because I still was going like buck wild as far as buying inventory was concerned. Like I was just bringing armfuls of stuff to the register and being like, hold these for me, I'm gonna get all of it. Um, so they kind of gave me the same deal even a little after that COVID period. Um, so for this particular trip, my cost of goods per item was $2.18. I did offer discounted shipping on this as well because again, I think I just sent out like bulk offers or something. And so I made a net profit of $13.40. On Saturday, which was July 15th, on Poshmark, I sold this splendid blue and white long sleeve collared popover tunic shirt in a women's size small. I was convinced that I was going to have to hold on to this forever. This just feels like the kind of thing that sticks around in a closet or eBay store for, you know, two to three years. It actually sold within the month of being listed. It sold for $15, and this was actually something that I got for free from America's Thrift Supply when they sent me um, like a micro bale of dresses to unbox on my channel. I will link that video right here. That was not a very good unboxing. And this is not a dress, but it was in that micro bale. I made a $12 profit off of it. On eBay, I sold this Matilda Jane Dream Chasers Lovely Day striped long sleeve dress in a size large. One thing that I'll say for Matilda Jane is that they have the loveliest style names for their pieces. So this sold for $25. I had $3.47 into it from a local consignment store and I made a net profit of $18.04. Matilda Jane for women has been selling more and more, I feel like, but it does not sell for a ton. So even getting $25 for this. I was pretty happy with that. And then on Sunday, which was July 16th on Poshmark, I sold this BCBG Max Azria pink floral print sweat track suit in a size medium. This I got from the reseller who um, wanted to spend more time with her family. And so I had about $2 into that. This set sold for $25 and I made a net profit of $18. I'm not going to lie. I had this listed pretty high. I want to say at like $50. This aesthetic was extremely trendy for a while. It's definitely that like Y2K look, but I don't know. While this got a ton of attention, just 
nobody wanted it. So I eventually let go of it for 25 and I'm just happy to make some money on that thing. The next thing to sell was this pair of Sperry Topsider brown suede leather slip-on boat shoes in an infant boy size 9. These sold basically instantaneously, like within a day or two of being listed. These were my son's. He actually wore these like not even that long ago. So I don't know if infant boys is necessarily correct, but these were like his church shoes, you know, like he didn't wear them often as most kids don't because these are not the most comfortable things to wear, but he did wear them. They were so cute, so preppy. They sold for $18 and I made a net profit of $14.40. The next thing to sell was this Logo Athletic NFL Denver Broncos Blue Quarter Zip Pullover Sweatshirt in a men's size extra large. That sold for $21. I had $2 into it from the reseller who decided she doesn't like to resell clothes, and so I made a net profit of $14.80. That sold fairly quickly too. Like I'd say it only took a month or two to sell. The last sale that we'll talk about for the week was over on eBay. It was another T by Talbot's piece, but this was a blue short sleeve activewear knit dress in a size medium. That one I did have for a while. I got it at that same $1 sidewalk sale from a local consignment store. It sold for $24.99, which was my full asking price. So I made a net profit of $19.34. If you can get Talbot's or T by Talbot's pieces for a dollar, you do it over and over again, no questions asked. So for this week, I made a net profit of $160.32. I only sold 10 things. So my average profit per item was $16. July has been rough. It has been so rough. Tell me about your July down in the comments below. And listen, if your July was rough, I mean, we're all in the same boat here. Like I, I feel you so hard. And not only has it been rough, with sales, but like, look at my eye, like, look, <laughs> like just, it's, it's been rough. So I get it. I feel your pain. And here's to hoping that August will be better. Thank you so much friends for watching and for hanging out with me. Ricardo, if you're still watching right now, thank you for real. You were the brightest light in the darkest of weeks. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you guys. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.